Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do a video on how to get a really beautiful polished professional makeup result utilizing some professional techniques and things that I've seen in workshops or by observing my favorite makeup artists work. There's a lot to go through in this video. I've been filming for like two hours. My voice is <coughs> so I think I'll just get straight into it and I hope you guys enjoy the video and like the finished result. So I shave my face using a little brow razor and you just use a feather light touch. It just makes your skin so smooth and the foundation looks flawless on the top. Estheticians are gonna tell you not to do this, but you make your own decision. Definitely patch test and don't try it out before a big event. Um, it's also better to do it a day or two before you have your big event. Um, for me, I can do it the day of, my skin is not sensitive, but um, definitely if you've never done it before, try it and no the hair will not grow back thicker that's a myth then you want to make sure your face is all washed i've even at photo shoots seen makeup artists pull out their clarisonic and do like a proper deep clean on the model's skin even if it looks like their skin is clean and then every single celebrity masterclass i've ever gone to has started with cream face cream and eye cream i'm gonna use the clarins total lift eye cream since i hit my 30s and even before eye cream is something that i can't skip because the little lines under my eyes just get enhanced by makeup, you know? So making sure it's nice and moist and plump under there is super important. And every like Kardashian makeup artist that I've been to see their workshops of, and I've been to quite a few, um, they always put eye cream on. Then of course, moisturizer and Bobbi Brown has this one. It's the vitamin enriched face base and it's actually primer and moisturizer. So I'm gonna use that one. It's a really nice product. I've gone through quite a few of these. They also have one for the eyes too, which I could have used, but I'm testing out that Clarins one. Now with creams, I always find it's best to really work it into your skin and leave a few minutes before you go and apply like your base products, because if there's any product on the top of the skin, it can create pilling, which is where those little bowls come up. Looks like it's like face lint. Skin lint? How disgusting is that? Has anyone ever described peeling as face lint? So really working it in. And of course, the Bobbi Brown one is good because it's made for using before makeup. So I know it doesn't peel, but sometimes with the other moisturizers that I love, like the Clinique Moisture Surge, you really just have to wait for it to soak in or work it in really hard, like firmly, not hard, so that you don't get face lint. Okay, something else that I notice makeup artists do is with foundation, well, what I like to do is often use a really massive brush to save me time and I dot the product all over my face. Whereas makeup artists, I find, might put the foundation on a palette or the back of their hand. Also using a smaller brush than you might think and just kind of starting on the areas that require coverage and then blending out from there. It's generally the center of the face and then making sure the bulk of the product is in that area where there's like redness, visible pores in that area. So sort of starting there and then blending out and you want minimal product in the hairline because obviously if you get makeup in your hairline, it's like really visible. It might flash back in photography. Um, and so you just wanna start out with most of the product in the center of the face and then blending out. And just a little bit at a time, you know? because you can always go back and add more coverage to the areas that you need. So really my brush is almost dry right now and I'm using that to just make sure it's blended out toward my hairline. There's like no new foundation there. You can probably see <laughs> there's no foundation there. Just pick up a little bit here because I've got some scarring on my cheeks from old breakouts. Covering that. And also just keep in mind, I feel like at this point, that your face doesn't have to be all one color right now. Um, we still have ages to go on the makeup and we haven't even done concealer yet. We haven't added blush, bronzer, all these products add layers and therefore add coverage. So if there are blemishes showing through now, they might not be once we get to those steps. So you just, you don't have to make sure that you are fully caked up at this point. And my chin always needs a little bit more. So I will add more there and then take the residual on the brush, blend it down the neck. And something that I notice pretty much all makeup artists do, obviously right now, because my hair is out, you're not gonna see it, but they pretty much always put foundation on the ears because if your ears are like pink 
or just your face is a different color to your ears, then it's not gonna be cute. So just make sure that's there. And something else that they do is they move the makeup even further down. There are There is body makeup and I love this brand, Vita Liberata, and I know that a lot of makeup artists use that. But you can also just use your facial foundation. Because obviously if you go to put your hand up to your face, you want your face to be, you know, a similar color. As you can probably see, this foundation isn't a perfect match for my face, but the rest of my body has more pigment to it than that. And in a photograph, you don't want your face to be even a slightly different color. But everyone's body has multiple different shades on it. There's undertones, overtones. So I just like to at least bring down some of the color on my face onto my collarbone. Not only does it perfect the area, but it will give it the same finish as my face and just draw all the colors together so that you're a little bit more cohesive. Because naturally, skin tones are not cohesive. Especially for me on my chest, I flush a lot and even looking at my um, hand to my chest, they're different, pretty different tones. It doesn't have to be a lot and it obviously depends on your outfit and stuff, but yeah. Eyebrows, recently I feel like the trend is very natural brows, so what I've been doing that I think elevates my makeup look is starting out with a brow gel, and I'm gonna go with clear today. Brushing my eyebrow hairs up, because that laminated look is very editorial, so brush them kind of, doesn't have to be directly up, because mine won't go that way, but up and out. So I just apply one coat, then I switch to the other eyebrow, because I can come back now that it's a little bit tacky, and finalize where I want the hairs to be. Otherwise, the product is a bit too wet to really position where I want the hairs. Another trick that I learned that I've always wanted to show you guys is to use clear eyelash glue, not a latex one. So look for the latex free ones. I'm just gonna do the tiniest amount over my eyebrows. Now don't be afraid because it's eyelash glue. So you're putting it on your eyelashes, it's safe to put on your eyebrows. Take a spoolie and put that through the brows. Now, one thing I learned is that you do have to work quickly with this because if the glue gets dry as you're blending it, um, you get like little white fluffs. And then if there are any bare patches, go in with a pencil to fill them in. For me, I need that in my arch because I used to have brow tattoo. So where I used to have the brow tattoo looks naturally thicker than my arch, which I've since grown in and didn't have tattoo on it. And I feel like you don't want your eyebrows to be one block color. So really just fill in the gaps. Seeing your skin through the brows is kind of key to making it look natural, you know? See how much thicker this brow looks than that one? Yay, now that will not budge. And if you want, you can press it down with your fingers. Yay, that looks good. Okay, now this is something that I do not often do anymore, but I've noticed that makeup artists still do it, is you take a bit of concealer and once you've done your brows, use it to carve and just clean up. And I think that that's a really big key to makeup artist looks. Everything is just very crisp. There's just no product outside the lines. I'm taking the brush also from horizontal to vertical so I can come up in amongst the roots there. Just make sure there's no like harsh lines. I'm going to take a Danessa Myricks product for my eyes and use that as a little base. This is the matte liquid pigment for lip, cheek and eyes. You know, again, putting it on the back of my hand so I can control how much I'm picking up. And also when you see it, you know, on the back of your hand, you can see how much is kind of there. And so you can know what to expect in terms of pigment on your eyelid. I do notice that makeup artists love these kind of cream pigments and this being a makeup artist brand, I kind of really trust it for my long wearing looks. I feel like makeup artists are pros at like layering their products. So definitely just taking your time. You don't always have the time, but if you do, I just find that I always get a better result if I really spend the time and I enjoy it better. Rushing is whew, my least favorite thing. Another pro tip, a lot of our face halo makeup artists love to use face halos as a color switcher for the brushes. So I've just been blending, you know, and I wanna make sure that when I'm blending, I'm not muddling the colors or putting on too much product. So I use a face halo to just get the bulk of the product out. And then I can go in with a basically clear brush and blend it out perfectly. 
This is something I do with my old face halos. So once I've had them for a while, then I like to use them for that. Then I'm going to do my eyeliner a little bit more early on in the look because I do want to do other stuff with the eyelid, but sometimes I notice that MUAs do the eyeliner here now and then they'll go in with like a black later to set it and give it more oomph. So I make sure I sharpen the pencil and I actually learned in makeup school that instead of coming on to your eye like from head on, you can lay the pencil against your eyelid and then you've got the eyelashes to kind of keep you steady. Something else makeup artists do is use one of these pads so that their hand doesn't touch the skin. Again, when you go into the other eye, make sure the blending brush you use is a little bit clean because if you've been using like a gel pencil, which I'm pretty sure this one is, it's long wear, it can set on the brush. And then when you go to try to blend out the new side, it will just be a little bit more difficult. So make sure your brush is clean for each eye. And again, we're building up. So it's like I've done a light layer. Now I'm building up to smoke it a little bit. Because if you just go ahead and do heaps um, in the first go, you're more likely to make a mistake. So definitely just take your time and build up in layers. And it doesn't have to be flawless, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go back in with some black eyeshadow at the very end. Another amazing professional makeup artist brand that I love is Ritual de Fil. I think I'm saying that right. They do really nice like multi-chrome, duo-chrome products and highlighters. Again, I'm putting that onto the back of my hand first. When it comes to blending, I just find that they really take their time and use a light hand. I feel like there's so much desire to like press really hard, but they really do have such a soft hand. And like whenever you get your makeup done by a professional artist, it's so much more relaxing than when I do it to myself because I'm so much more rigorous. From what I've seen, makeup artists always curl their clients' lashes and it's definitely not a step that I always do. Then mascara, always look down. So the makeup artists will get their clients to look down. So when you're doing it on yourself, look down into a mirror. And I just start at the very base, rest the bristles against my eyelid. Shimmy and pull out. Now, I also come from above so that if any eyeshadow has fallen on my eyelashes from the top, we're kind of coating that over or making sure that that is not there anymore and I swivel the brush down and out to help assist with the curl. Then with the lower lashes, I find that they that makeup artists don't come onto the eyelashes the way I do. They either go like this, so the point first, or they'll put some mascara on the back of their hand. And then I've often seen this done with a fan brush, but I've also seen it done with like broad angle brushes too. They'll get it on an angle brush and then paint it like that. And that's usually just for the lower lashes in what I've seen. Then with some brush cleaner, take the end of one of your makeup brushes, make sure it's clean and dry. Then while the mascara is still tacky, press the lashes up so that as the mascara dries, they're more likely to dry in that upwards curled position. Cool, now I'm gonna move on to the rest of the makeup and I think cream bronzer is totally something that I notice makeup artists using a lot. Even if they go ahead with like a powder later, I noticed this. This is the Danessa Myricks one. Get some on the back of my hand, work it into the brush and then place the brush under your cheekbone, definitely not in the hairline, but under the cheekbone so that most of the product is gonna be there at the upper part and then sweep down lightly like that. If you've got the desired amount of product on there, clean some off your brush and buff that in. And I personally like to use the same brush that I used my foundation with because then, you know, that will help with blending. Blending it up into my temple and taking just the residual into the hairline, being really careful because that will look stupid if you get heaps in there. Definitely add some up to the top of your forehead as well. I also take whatever's left and put it on my nose a little bit just so that all these tones are not just in that place you know they're going to be 
present kind of everywhere so sweeping it underneath the jaw a little bit onto the ear of course and if I suck my cheeks in I can see which way my natural contour would go you know how a lot of people kind of sweep it up like that I don't like that look I think it looks more natural to come down like that and then get the Angelina Jolie kind of cut pop some underneath your collarbone because if there would be shading here there would be some shading under here too if you'd gotten it from the sun so now I'm gonna go and add lashes and I definitely noticed that makeup artists usually use cluster lashes or single lashes if you're trying to get that professional makeup result you don't have to use professional makeup brands but, but I do just find that I get that look easier if I use their products this is the Nikki makeup no lash lash by Swede lashes there's an 8, 10, and 12 millimeter cluster lash in this. Plucking them out of the container one by one, dipping in the lash glue, then holding a mirror up quite close to my eye. And then I usually do about three at a time, so I'm gonna do three on the outer edge with the longest ones. Once I've got them even on both sides with that length that I want, I'm gonna move up to like more medium ones as I get to the center part of my eye. Also going to do it on my lower lashes. Then I'm going to take a cream black color, but you could also do like gel eyeliner. This is the Danessa Myricks. This is the Danessa. Why do I keep saying Myricks? Danessa Myricks Blackout Matte Liquid Pigment. So I put a little bit on the back of my hand. And then I'm just going to use that to make sure... You can't see the glue to go up and over what we just did. Now this is definitely a better option than black eyeshadow because eyeshadow we might get fallout and at this late stage in the game we don't want that. You can use this little brush to come up underneath as well and fill in any gaps in the lash line. And now is when I'm also going to bring that in and line right in the lash line of the inner corner. With the pencil eyeliner, it wasn't as easy to get in there, but now that I have this tiny little brush and I can look at my eyes with the mascara on, with the lashes on, with the liner on as it is and see just where I need to add more. Okay, now for concealer. I'll take a little bit of concealer and I just place it where I actually have discoloration. And I'm not gonna draw it over where my lines are under my eyes because that's just going to enhance the look of my lines. Now if I need any more coverage anywhere is that's where I'll put it. And then again I'll use a really small brush, smaller than what I might normally, to just make sure I'm kind of pinpoint, this is not pinpoint, but really strategically blending that concealer right where I want it to be so I can be a lot more precise. Even using it to crispen up the little wing I've got there. I was just using a really light shade for under my eye area and stuff, but now I'm going to go closer around my lips because that's an area of our face that we often touch and there's just often a lot of like discoloration, imperfections around there, redness. Any redness around the lips is going to be brought out. Whatever's left on the brush, I'm patting that over blemishes further out if I need to. Now that I've got the concealer on everywhere I want it, and again, I don't like my face to look all one color and all too perfect, so I don't let it be super full coverage. Do you know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Then I'm gonna take a translucent powder. This one's the Laura Mercier one. Oh, not that much. Not that much. In fact, like hardly any, guys. Then I'll take a little dome brush, and again, smaller than what I feel like people would normally reach for. A lot of the time with powders I would go for something big like this but I find that makeup artists use something a little bit smaller a little bit more dense so I'm going to go for this Smith brush dipping into the powder tapping it on the back of my hand so there's no excess and then pressing that over the face once the powder has been pat on then I can use light dusting motions you just don't want to go straight over like damp or wet foundation with sweeping motions. You want to pat in first. Then using a really soft brush, I'm going to put a little bit more bronzer on. 
really soft patting then sweeping and just using a really light hand not much product Again, just putting some on the back of my hand to make sure that I'm not going to be putting too much product on. And the fact that I've got cream bronzer on, powder, and then this powder on top is going to help with longevity as well. All these little layers and layering on top is what, you know, Makeup by Ariel said in his masterclass, Mario, all those big makeup artists that I've been to have said the same thing. I'm gonna use a dewy blush and I just think you couldn't put creams on top of powder but you can as long as you pat first at least. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this and again a brush. I actually like to put it on top of powder because then it brings back the life to the skin even though we only applied a small amount. So it brings back that more natural creamy texture. Gosh blush makes such a difference back of the hand so you can kind of see what you're dealing with and then coming onto the face. I also notice makeup artists pat a little bit over the nose and sometimes the forehead. Again and it's just a matter of like bringing all the tones that are on your face together so it's not just like oh you've got a poppy pink cheek random like no it's actually part of my skin you can see that it's shining through on my forehead and on my nose and my chin. And just the residual. A little bit cream highlight. Keeping it really precise, not like heaps everywhere. So a small brush, patting it right on the high point of the cheekbone only. And then in here, in this little crevice of the nose, I was actually on a magazine shoot when I saw the makeup artist do this to the model and it looked so stunning in the photos and when I was watching her move in the light, so definitely doing that. And here. Any residual, just very lightly connecting the two. The days of looking like a glazed donut are sort of not as trendy anymore, I don't think. So I like to leave it just a little bit more natural like that. Okay, now when it comes to lips, I find that makeup artists usually do them last. You need a little puff to protect your work. Uh, a lip liner, which is something that I normally don't even do, but it needs to be really sharp. Okay, and then we're gonna use that in case, because I do like to steady my hand with my pinky. So I take the length of the pencil, so not coming at it directly ahead. No, tilting it side so you're getting the length of the pencil against the skin and then drawing and following the natural line of the lips. And if you want to go over the lip line, just hit the vermilion border, which is the little white outline of the lips. Try not to overdraw too much. And then using a lip brush, never from the tube, just because you can be a lot more precise with a brush. Do the same thing. See how I'm using the angle of the brush to line up with the corners of the mouth? Then if you absolutely have to, a little bit of concealer on a very tiny little brush. One last thing that I feel like a lot of professionals do that you don't really notice is they actually color in the hairline. So I'm going to take my Root Touch Up Powder. This is by Clairol. And you just perfect the hairline. That way there's no white line between like the bronzer, the foundation and our hairline, especially if you've got, you know, brown hair. That's quite a stark contrast. This is where my cowlick is, so fill that in to make that look more full and just give it that more perfect shape. You can even use it in your part to make your part look thicker. Now don't be too heavy handed, you don't want to look like you've got a helmet on. Okay, now I'm looking at myself. I want to enhance the highlight. I'm going to take this and on a very small brush, I'll take I'll mix these two. You know what? I'll mix that one too. But just a teensy amount. 
And again, checking it on the back of my hand, kind of working it into the brush. Also, put some on your collarbone. Again, that's another way when you're looking at me full on, it's not like, whoa, makeup, bright colors, gloss, and then your body's just not. <laughs> so definitely put some on to bring it all together. That is the finished look. Oh, that is the finished look. Everything should match um, and kind of flow together. You know, my ears are not a different color. It's not too much product. It's just a little bit of product laid over and over again. And then really crisp lines. So there you have it. I love how this came out, putting together all my favorite techniques and even some techniques that I wouldn't normally do but that I think make subtle differences that when they put all together in a look give you that really special occasion look. And what I also love about this brow hack is that now I have a fringe and that I'm constantly playing with it and like touching it. This will not budge even underneath you know, my hair or under a hat even, like it won't move until I go to take it off with my makeup remover. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you guys over on my Instagram and my Facebook and my TikTok. So follow me there at Chloe Morello and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.